Bhagavan, how does a householder fit into the scheme of liberation? Why do you think you are a householder? If you become an ascetic, a similar thought, that you are an ascetic, will haunt you. Whether you remain a householder or renounce that condition and go to the forest, your mind goes with you. The ego is the source of all thought, and it creates the body, the world, and makes you think that you are a worldly man. If you renounce the world, the thought that you are an ascetic will replace the thought that you are a householder, and the forest environment will replace that of the home. But the mental obstacles will still be there, and they may even increase in new surroundings. Changing environments does not help at all. The obstacle is the mind. Ramana Maharshi The mind must be overcome, whether at home or in the forest. If you can create a forest, why not at home? So why change environments? Your efforts can be made right now, in whatever environment you find yourself in. If objects had an independent existence, that is, if they existed somewhere separate from you, then it would be possible to distance yourself from them. But they do not exist separate from you, they owe their existence to you, to your thoughts. Therefore, where could you go to escape them? Where can you go to flee from the world and its objects? They are like a man's shadow, from which he cannot escape. The cause of your misery is not in your life. The cause of your misery is within you, as ego, the false perceptions of individuality and division. You impose limitations on yourself and then engage in a vain struggle to transcend them. Is it possible to reconcile work and spiritual life? The mind is the only obstacle. Why should your duties and occupations in life hinder your spiritual effort. It is possible to perform all the activities of life with detachment and see only the self as real. It is wrong to think that if you remain inwardly fixed on the real self, the obligations of life will not be properly performed. It is like an actor on stage dressed in a character's costume, he acts and even feels like part of the play. But in reality, he knows that in real life, he is not the character, but someone else. In the same way, why should body consciousness or the feeling of I am the body, disturb you once you know that in truth, you are not the body but the real self. Nothing the body does should prevent you from remaining as the real self. Remaining fixed on the real self will not interfere with the proper and effective performance of any duties the body has. Just as the actor's awareness of his true identity does not interfere with the role he plays on stage, renunciation is always in the mind. It is not about going to the forest or solitary places, 
or giving up our duties. What is important is that the mind does not turn outward but inward. If passions were something external to us, we could fight them and conquer them, but all of them come from within us. When we look inward at the source from which they arise, we prevent them from arising and thus conquer them. It is the world and its objects that give rise to our passions, but the world and its objects are only created by our minds. They do not exist when we are in deep sleep. The only freedom you have is to turn inward and there renounce activities. To abandon activities means to give up attachments to activities or their fruits. Letting go of the idea that I am the doer. If we remain fixed on the real self, activities will continue to happen in the same way and their success will not be compromised. One should not hold the idea that we are the doers. Even so, activities will continue. This force, whatever its name, that brought the body into existence, ensures that the activities the body is destined to perform are carried out. The fact is that any amount of actions can be performed, and very well performed, by an enlightened person without any identification with them or the impression that he is the one doing them. A power acts through his body and uses it to do the work. Because you identify with the body, you think the work is done by you. But the body and its activities, including work, do not exist outside the self. The feeling I work is the obstacle. Ask yourself, who works? Who is the worker? Let the one who works ask the question. You are always the self. You are not the mind. It is the mind that asks these questions. The work is done by itself, always in the presence of the self. Work is not an obstacle to realization. It is the false identity of the worker that disturbs you. Get rid of the false identity. Remember who you are. In this way, work will not bind you. It will proceed automatically. Intuition works when the thinker has no thoughts. Guided by intuition, those who made great discoveries did so not when anxiously thinking about them but in silence, through intuition. Surrender is abandoning yourself to the source of your being. Do not be deluded into thinking that this source is some god outside of you. The source is within. Surrender to it. This means that you must seek this source and dive into it. Grace is within you. Grace is yourself. Grace is not something to be acquired from others. If it is external, it is useless. All you need to know is that your existence is within you. You are never outside your operation. If you understand the real self, you will see that it is everything everywhere at all times. Nothing exists beyond the real self. 
One of these two videos has been chosen for you. Thanks for watching.